to teach on bearing the fruit of love. Bearing the fruit of love. If you notice, I've been bringing series of teaching because of the harvest season that we are in. This is the season where you stand to reap the things that you have uh, sowed. That's why I told you, if you're very uh, sensitive, you'll notice that the warfare seems to have increased and the devil tries to come against you even in visions and in dream at night. So there's a reason he's doing that. The reason is because he wants you to miss your harvest. So, and I thought about, um, we started with uh, the full teaching on, the, on bringing in your harvest and the things that you have to do. And last week I taught about uh, the fruit of the Spirit. And before then I taught on how to make sure that the lion spirit doesn't um, steal your harvest by making you believe a lie and then the truth will come and pass you by or you are in judgment with God because you believed according to the flesh instead of believing him for what he's doing. So lying vanities make people end they, they, they reap wind. So that's the function of the lying spirit in the harvest season is to make sure that he wants you to reap vanity and the wind. Okay? So last week I thought about the generally before uh, you see a harvest because the prosperity of your soul is tied with the prosperity of your, I mean, it's tied with your physical prosperity. And one of the things that the Lord said is that he wants us to be a fruit. If you're not bearing fruit, then you cannot have a harvest. And, uh, and we found out last week that the fruit um, is listed. The kind of fruit that the Lord wants us to, to bear, not the wrong type of fruit. You can bear good fruit or you can bear the wrong fruit according to the flesh. Either way, it's a fruit. So it's, a lot of people don't pay attention to their actions and their words. The Lord said, by their fruit, you shall know them. And I told you last week, your actions reveal the kind of fruit that you're, build, you're yield bearing or your words reveal the kind of fruit that you're also producing and your belief. Because if you believe it long enough, you're going to speak it and then you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why you have to make sure that you bear, you, that first of all, that you don't bear the wrong type of fruit. This is the wrong type of fruit that the Lord said he doesn't want us to bear. It's in, uh, outlined in uh, Galatians 5 verses 19 to 21. It says, now the works of the flesh are manifest in these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation. You know, people imitating you, trying to be you, they are sinning against God. They are bearing the wrong type of fruit. Wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envies, murder, drunkenness, reviling, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, and as I also told you in time past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Those are the wrong type of fruits. So you've got to watch out for them in your words, in your beliefs, and in your actions. And that's how God uh, determines the kind of harvest that he's going to reward you with. So those are the wrong fruit that you don't want to start bearing. Because they are fruit produced by the flesh. Being quick to anger, sowing strife and discord, instigating all kinds of stuff, gossiping about people, that's wrong fruit. It doesn't yield to a good harvest. Amen? Now, the right fruit that the Lord wants us to bear is also outlined in the same scripture. And as I told you last week, that the fruit that the Lord is talking about is not the produce that you get from a tree that we eat. Because every tree produces a fruit. And we, while understanding of a fruit is something that you actually pluck and you eat. 
But that's not the kind of fruit that the Lord is talking about. Because we are trees of righteousness, just because every tree produces a fruit, we are also to produce fruit. But the fruit that he's talking about is also outlined in Galatians chapter 4, I mean chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. And he says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and against such there is no law. There is no law that says that you cannot walk in love, you cannot walk in peace, you cannot have joy, you cannot uh, be gentle. You know, so because these are the fruits that, uh, that you produce when you come to God. And because the number one, as, as we can see from the list above, from this particular scripture, the first fruit produced by the Holy Spirit is love. Therefore, today we have to pay attention to love because it's the first thing that is listed in the series of the fruit. One fruit that we're supposed to yield, I mean, it, it carries a, a lot of uh, different attributes, but it's the same fruit because it is the fruit of the Spirit. So, love is number one. Therefore, when you take a good look at love and when you look at the dictionary definition of love, what do they tell you? It says love is an intense feeling of deep affection. I, I tell you, they say love is an intense feeling of deep affection. That's the dictionary, the world definition of love. That's why you find people saying, I love this person. And then some years later, they tell you, I've fallen out of love. Or I fell in love with this person. Then I fell out of love with the person but the biblical definition from what we're going to see is different it says uh, love is defined as the person of God himself therefore to the Christian love is more than a deep affection or feeling it has no conditions attached to it as we see in uh, 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 to, to 12. It tells us, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knows God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. See this? So this is the biblical definition that God is love. In this was manifest the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Hearing his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the perpetuation for our sins. You see that? How that contradicts the world's definition of falling in love with deep affection? We didn't even love God when he loved us. You know, so we say, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. So we see that God's type of love is different from the world's type of love. You know, because the love God is talking about is himself. So we ask ourselves, therefore, what does it mean that God is love? And can, how can we know that the statement, God is love, is true? And how does God show us that the very definition of love is Him? Then you, number one, love began with Him. If you ever listen to people do, that go to hell, one key ingredient that they never come back to report is what? There is no love in hell. It's a doggy dog world in hell. Everybody is tormented. Everybody is crying for a second chance, and there is none. Nobody gets a second chance to get out of hell once they land there permanently. You know? So, love is an attribute of God Himself, it's a person of who God is. Without Him, there is no love. 
the, the love came through him and he is that love. That's number one. Number two, love is his primary nature. You know how you have a toothpaste and you squeeze the toothpaste, what comes out? So if you squeeze God, what comes out? Love. You know, one of the things that really amazes me in the Bible is the, the king, Ahab. If you read the, in the Old Testament, he tells you that of all the kings that ever ruled Israel, different from Judah, Ahab was the most wicked king of all of them put together. He was the most wicked king. He did worse than any king before him, in other words. But what was surprising is that one day, uh, somebody gives a prophecy to Ahab, telling him God is going to judge him. And so Ahab took his royal robe and set it aside and just prostrated himself on the ground before God. And you know what was funny? And I think it was the, the prophet Isaiah. Before he could uh, get up, he, go, he goes like, have you seen Ahab? He's humbled himself before me. And for doing that, God just forgave him. He just forgave him. And I was like, the first time I read it, I was stunned. And I was like, for somebody who did all this wickedness, witchcraft, idolatry, marriage, Jezebel, turned the whole country, killed all his prophets except for the ones that God hid and the seven thousands. And he forgave him for humbling himself before him. That's the nature of God. That is love. Because us, we go like, oh, he needs to pay yeah. <laughs> for what he has done. He's corrupted the country, yeah. you know, but God forgave him. Yeah. So, and then when you uh, know that love is the primary nature of God, that was why the Bible tells us when we were enemies with God, God was showing his love to us through his son on the cross. So if you read Romans chapter, two, uh, chapter 5, verses 6 to 8, it says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. I mean, can you imagine sending your son to die for a killer, a serial killer for that matter? <laughs> you know, he said, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love, in other words, showed his love to us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And sometimes it really amazes me when I think about this particular scripture, because when I was nine years old and I dropped dead, and I was dead for two days, my, uh, my dad's parents that I, I was living with at the time were Muslims. And I never even knew about Christianity, never heard about Jesus, never heard anything except Islam. And I remember the first day, uh, even somebody was passing out a pamphlet, and he had the story of Isaac. And I heard it. I ran to my dad's uh, father and I said, well, they stole our story. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, they're talking about this Isaac the, uh, I had started schooling. So I said, the Christians told a story about Ishmael to make him Isaac. Not knowing at that time that Christianity came before Islam. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and I was thinking that Islam was the real thing. So, and he agreed with me that the Christians told our story. <laughs> and you know, in the midst of all that, not knowing him, I dropped dead. So on the second day, who comes to raise me back up? A man that I knew, I don't even know his name, never told me his name. He just told me how to get back in my body and to sit up so that when all the people that have been crying, including my mom that I was feeling sorry for because he, she had cried everybody as I was watching people crying. And he said, if you go back in your body, and uh, sit up so that when they open the door and they see you're okay, she's gonna stop crying. But he never told me his name. You know, even we went all the way to, Mount, to the Mount of Olives before this time, 
And he just told me, go get baptized. Well, I don't know what baptism means because I didn't know about Christianity. But he came all the way from heaven to save a nine-year-old. I mean, when you think about it, it it's mind-blowing. Because I had a little cousin who died at the same time. And nobody remembers him to this day because he was a, a, a Muslim boy. You know, he, he died. He got sick and he died. And sometimes when I even try to imagine what he looked like, I can't even remember the face exactly. And so when I think about, I didn't even know the Lord, didn't know his name even when I met him, that he would come all the way to where I had uh, dropped dead, where I was, was, and then he gave me another chance. To me, that is love. He did it not because I knew him, not even because I loved him. I was actually thinking that they stole the story of uh, Islam and put it in the, in the Christian bulletin that I had found, you know? But that is God at work, showing his love to one who does not deserve it. So that's why when the world say that love is an intense feeling, and then you come to Christendom, it's not a feeling. Love is the person of God, and without him, you cannot love. You know, because I, I remember when I was a Muslim, one of the things that, that you would never read in the Quran is love. It's an eye for an eye, and they still do it today. If you still, when I was growing up, they just asked you, with what hand did you take whatever? So you tell them with whatever hand, they cut it off. If you blind somebody, if you do something to blind somebody, they do something to that same eye that you made somebody with. You know, so it's when you come into Christianity that you begin to figure God talks about love. God always talks about how much he loves, how to forgive. And it's mind-boggling, you know. Like I was saying, when I uh, took um, a class in philosophy, in my undergraduate studies, and there was a, uh, the, club, the, the course was existentialism, where you debate the, uh, the existence of God. So there was this uh, theory, and I think it was, it was, whether it was the Pascal theory, it says that if you believe that God exists, at this time I hadn't made a commitment to being a Christian to be born again yet. So the, the professor, his teaching was that if you, if you believe that God exists, and then at the end, it turns out God doesn't exist. You lose nothing. And so if you believe that God exists, and it turns out that God exists, you gain everything. Well, as a, somebody who had an Islamic background, that was a shock to me. Because I remember raising my hand in the class, I said, to ask him, what do you mean you lose nothing if you believe that God exists, and then you defer all your uh, revenge? And... Uh, taking care of people who hurt you to him and then it turns out he doesn't exist then you would have lost the opportunity that if somebody slapped you to stand there ten times if somebody if somebody scratched you make sure you scratch them all over you know so it was a strange uh, theory and and i think the guy never heard <laughs> any kind of uh reasoning the way i gave it to him i was like Revenge, you know, what does the world say about revenge? Sweet revenge. You know, all believers think revenge is sweet. They do you, you do them more. You know, so until you come really turn to the Lord Jesus, that you begin to learn about what really the definition of love is. That love is not a feeling, but love is the person of God. It's who he is, and that's what he gives us through his spirit. That's why you see that the fruit of the spirit can only be given to you when you belong to him and you can only bring them forth when you are walking with him. Not be professing to belong to him and yet walking according to the flesh. You have to be truly committed to him to yield the fruit of the spirit. And one of the uh, primary fruit that we're discussing is love. So 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 gives us if you were supposed where it says love, if you put God, you will see that it fits perfectly. 
He reads from uh, verse 1. If I speak in the tongue of tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, if you say do not have God, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and can phantom all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have faith that I can move mountains but do not have love, I'm nothing. If you put on there, do not have God, I'm nothing. You know, if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to, to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. That's why a lot of people, they, they, you read in the media, they gave how many billions to uh, charity. If you did it without God, nothing. It means nothing. You know, they found this, uh, create a foundation and they give money to people that they want or courses that, they, that please them. You know, it, 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 it avails nothing because you have to do it out of love. Even if you give 10 billion to a person and you're begrudging the person, you're not going to get it. Because only the things that you do in love, God accepts. Mm -hmm. That's why the fruit of love, you have to walk in love to bear it. Amen? He says, uh, if, I, uh, if, uh, if I give all I possess to the poor and my body to hardship again, and uh, that I may boast, and do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patience. Now it tells you the characteristics of God that is manifested in love. It says, one, love is patient, love is kind. What does God call himself? Long suffering. He gives us, he shows us loving kindness. You know, he said, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. All these are things that God does. It says, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. You know, because if any other entity was God, he would have folded this whole world a long time ago because of the mischief that you see in the world. I mean, like, this week, a man kills his children, buries them in awe, kills his pregnant wife. For what? Maybe because he fell in love with another woman, or because he doesn't want to pay child support if she was divorcing him. There was no even evidence that she was divorcing him. You know? So, but love doesn't do that. Love will not look to a child that calls you daddy, and you strangle the child to death because of your feeling. For, that has changed towards the mother. It's kind of crazy. That's why it says love never fails. Mm -hmm. But where uh, where there are prophecies, they will cease. Uh, where there are tongues, they will still they will be still. Where there there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and prophesy in part. When that which is complete comes, that which is in part will, will disappear. It says now these three. Faith, hope, and love. Listen to this. These three in life. Faith, hope, and love. Faith you need here to believe God to give you what you want. To serve Him and to be in communion with Him. Hope is to be trusting His faithfulness that He will bring it to pass. Love is the only thing that you take out of here as the scripture tells us. Or everything you did in life, when you get to on the day of judgment, your work will be tried with the fire of love. Only those things that you did out of love will survive. Some people, if you, I mean, Christmas time, the one time the Lord told me, go get a job at the department store and ask people why they are buying gifts. Some are buying gifts because everybody in their family, they are competitive. They don't want to give the least gift. Some give gifts to show that they are better than other people. They are more prosperous. Some, I mean, it was different types of reasons why people were buying gifts. And not one of those gifts, reasons, would make their gift. First, you have to be Christian. And then, to be, as a Christian, you have to do it out of love. 
And if you didn't do it out of love, every good thing that you did would be burnt in the fire of love when it, when it is tried. Why? Because God is love. That's the fruit he wants. A man after his uh, image, that is also after his likeness. His likeness is that of love. You know? So, we have to make sure that love is one thing, the motivating factor for everything that you do. Don't judge the person if you cannot cheerfully give out of love. Don't even try giving. Because it will be burnt. Love is the most powerful weapon that God has given us. That's why the Bible says, as we just read, that love never fails. And uh, we are born of the spirit of love. So we are born of love and we are born to love. See that? We are born of love and we are born to love. That's why the Lord Jesus, remember what he said. He said, of all those who are born of women, John the Baptist was the greatest of all the prophets. Beginning from Moses and all those, he said John the Baptist was the greatest. But he who is least in the kingdom is greater than John. Why? Because we are born of the Spirit of God. We are born of love. We are not just born of flesh and blood anymore. When you come to the Lord, you get born again and you get born of the Spirit of God. Your nature changes to the nature of love. That's why also when you listen, when you read the Bible, remember Jesus was walking with the disciples. They went to a city. They didn't receive them. And the disciples turned to him and said, Shall we command fire to come down to burn them like Elijah did? And he rebuked them. He said, You don't know the spirit that is in you. It's a different spirit from the spirit that was in Elijah and Elisha. The spirit that was on Elisha, Elisha was born of a woman, Elijah was born of a woman. Now we are born of the Spirit of God. There's a difference. We are born to give forgiveness, to make grace to people, and not to take revenge on people, but to forgive them. Amen? Mm -hmm. So therefore, what do we need to do? We need to practice walking in love. I said, walking in love takes practice. Because it, it took us a long time to form uh, our habits the way they are today. Amen. You know, so, so you actually have to grow in love. That, that's why when, you, when you're, you, you, you purpose in yourself that you're going to walk in love, if you feel like you failed the test, you reacted. You reacted negatively instead of walking in love, then Try again. Don't give up. Don't get frustrated because love work is a practice. Amen? Amen? When you are born again, God is very, one of the attributes that he has is that he's long suffering. He will walk with you over and over again until you learn to begin to walk in love. Even the way you think you're doing good, sometimes he lets you see. You know, because I remember one time and uh, I had just uh, gotten born again. And I had no patience, so I went to see my uh, I went to see a, a pastor, and the the lady that was uh, keeping his appointment, the uh, admin at the office, let me sit down there for like two hours, and then telling me he was busy, but I went with uh, somebody that was related to me, and she looked and said, "That's the pastor leaving." She, he's been in the office all this while that this guy, this lady has us sitting over here. Oh my God, did I fly off the handle. I let her have it. I washed that down. I told her the story of her life. <laughs> Before, I mean, I really laid it on thick and she was like in tears. And I was like, slept you right. You need to really cry because when you were mean. And then as I turned to leave, to go complain to the pastor, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. He said, now are you happy? And I was like, so are you happy? You've brought her to tears. You've sought revenge. And I was like, you know, at the time, I was like, she deserved it. <laughs> you would think I would fall on my face before the Lord. I said, oh Lord, I'm sorry. I said, but Lord, you saw her. I waited two hours. So I did, I didn't tell her enough. <laughs> So all I did was show God I got my 
my work cut out for me. <laughs> and so I started practicing in love. And after some years, I decided, you know what? I got this love work down uh, as a science. And so one day, where I was working, uh, I was working in a uh, uh, payroll area. And the lady that usually hires out the payroll on Fridays was out. So it was my job to hand out the payrolls to the employees. And so somebody was in the front office asking for their, they have come, they were off that day, so they came to get their payroll for the, for the week. And at the time, this time I like to wear really long heels. And so I got on my heels and my little mini skirt, because I had just got, I mean, I, just, I got saved about three years, but it hasn't really taken. <laughs> you can tell he has to take it. So I was really still wearing my little mini skirt and my heels. And so I went out there and strutted my stuff and got to the office. And the guy said, I've come to receive my paycheck. I said, I have it. Let me see your ID. He said, He didn't have an ID. I said, Well, too bad. And uh, the other lady that uh, works in the front office says to me, I know him. So he can have his pay. I said, well, he has to give me a, uh, an ID because I ain't getting in trouble because of him. So I need an ID. So at the time, his mother stepped forward. She drove him. She said to me, they took his driver's license and uh, he was almost going to jail. She, this is her only son. She's doing her best to uh, keep him out of uh, trouble. So can I please give him the, the paycheck? Are you kidding me? I said, never. I mean, before I do it, I was just saying, <laughs> my little love work was out the window. And I told the lady, I don't know what I told her, but I was really, really rude. You know, so the other lady that works in the front office, she came over and said, she said, Miss Mary, can you uh, listen to what this lady, I said, I'm not ready to listen. I'm going back with the paycheck. So, and then she said, come back, this lady. So when I came back, I still wasn't giving them the paycheck. And then the lady, she was all flustered. And she said to me, I have, the, I have his driver's license. I took it. And so she's trying to look in her uh, wallet to pull the driver's license. And she was all shaky and nervous and everything. And then she looked up at me. And I knew that was the Lord. You could hear the voice of the Holy Spirit come out of that woman. She said, you were so rude to me. And she said, all my life I've tried to be a Christian, to do people right. But you were so rude to me, that when people get so mean to me and so rude, I get nervous. And when she said that, you couldn't hear the pin drop in heaven. God was listening. And I was like, Oh, this was a setup, and I just flunked big time. This love work that I thought I had down to a science, I don't have it the way I think I do. So she actually looked, she pulled out the driver's license, and I gave them the check, and I had to hurry out of that place. So as I was leaving, I said, Lord, what just happened? He said, well, I wanted to let you see how far your own righteousness and grace can carry you. He said, all that woman said to you is that they don't have an ID and there goes your grace and your own <laughs> righteousness <laughs> at the door. <laughs> he said, before you left, you didn't even consult me. You just strutted your stuff to go on your good deed. That's what he called it. He said, you were going on your good deed. So I wanted to see you to see how far your good deeds <laughs> can carry you. And I was like, oh. And I said, because the Holy Spirit jumped in that woman to indict me before God. Yeah. And I was like, I am so sorry. You know, so I went and I was like, this love work is something that you really, really have to practice. Yes, Why? Because love gives. That's the nature of love is that it gives. If you, if you don't believe it, read the John 3.16. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, 
that whoever believes in him should not perish but have a lasting life. He said, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Love is gracious. Love is merciful. Love forgives. Actually, when you're born again, the, the, the Lord said, if you don't forgive, you get delivered to tormentors. Because even the Lord's prayer is forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us. So if you don't forgive other people, God will not also forgive you. You know? And if you don't forgive, guess what? You hold up your harvest. So love is something that we have to really put in practice if we want to see a bountiful harvest in this harvest season. Amen? Amen. And I say that love, God intends for us to overcome evil because love overcomes evil. Remember the Lord says, what is it? Overcome evil with good. Do not reward men according to what they did to you. Uh, it's actually written in um, Matthew 5, 44, in a good way. He says, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despisefully use you and persecute you. This is hard to do. Are you kidding? Somebody uh, uh, persecute you, you're going to go out of your way without the Lord to avoid them or to resent them. Before I go uh, gossip, my name used to be Tina Spack. Spack because I sparkle in anger. <laughs> so God had to walk on me, let it go. Because I wouldn't, are you kidding? I knew how to plot revenge. If you take me four years to plot a revenge against a person, I will do it. And because when I get them, I get them good. You know, and the Lord was like, we don't do that anymore. You've got to let it go. You know, so you have to, tonight, today, I don't even, if people do me stuff, it's kind of interesting. I don't remember. Once I forgive them and move on, I don't even remember what they did. Unless somebody remember, reminds you, oh, you know, so, 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 and so did that to you. I go like, forget it. It's not worth it. You know, but the old me, before I got saved, are you kidding me? There shall be no vengeance left on the earth. <laughs> and then he says in Romans 4, 20, If thine enemy hunger, feed him. Can you imagine? Your enemy hungry and you are to feed him. If he's thirsty, you are to give him drink. For in so doing, you heap a coal of fire on his head. You know? And these are things that the world cannot, cannot ever do. Because it takes the Spirit of God to do these things, you know? So, uh, our love work is something that we need to practice because another quality of love is that love covers the multitude of sins, according to First Peter. In other words, there, you will have an opportunity to expose somebody who is doing stuff, but love will tell you, don't do it. Like now, you have uh, somebody who wrote a book, they secretly recorded somebody's uh, conversation with them and then they're going to go publish a book or they heard something about somebody and they're going to go tell it in the media. You know, it's just the quality of uh, love doesn't operate in the world system because they are looking for money. That if you, if you write a tell-all book, you make a lot of money. But at the end of it, you go to hell because it's the wrong kind of fruit that you're bearing, you know? So that, that's why you, you find out that the Lord told us in John 15, he says, actually when we, bear, when we walk in love and we bring forth the fruit of love that he sees in our words, in our beliefs, in our, in our actions, we actually we please the Father by doing this. And when you please the Father, you ask whatever you want, he will give it to you. And he said, by us walking in love is actually a testimony that we are his disciples. According to John 15, verses uh, 8 and 9, it says, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciple. As the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. So if God loved us and still loves us, he expects us to love other people. And that's why the greatest commandment that he gave us is what? It's love God and love one another. According to uh, John, still John 15, he says, This is my commandment, 
that ye love one another as I have loved you, greater love had no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command. Now, how many of us will go die for another person? No, nobody that I've ever met except the Lord Jesus. You know, all he required us to do is just love and forgive people of the things that he, they did to us. He has taken care of the biggie, laying down his life for all of us. Amen? Now I say to you that the result of not walking in love is divine judgment. Because the, the Lord told us, as you judge, so you, you will be judged. By what measure you measure, that's what God is going to use you use to measure to you. If you don't let anything go, God will not let anything go as far as you are concerned. You know? So we have to be very careful to make sure that uh, we extend mercy and love. Or rather, mercy in love. Turn the other cheek in love. Pretend you didn't hear what somebody said, even though you heard it clearly. Rather than standing there, go like, you say what? You say what now? You're talking to me? A whole me? And then, next thing you know, somebody's going to go to jail. <laughs> there goes a lawyer fee. <laughs> and there goes a record. You know? So it's not worth it, even in the physical. And then, the Lord said, when you do these things, when you, when you let mercy triumph over judgment, you actually show him that you are his disciple. How did they know that Peter then were with Jesus? He said by their words. The, the people were able to tell that they had been with Jesus by their words, by their actions. Because they were not learned men. They were just fishermen. But from their belief, their words and their actions, you can tell this person has been with the master. Amen? And then... Uh, if you don't walk in love, you will lack the fruit. You will not be able to have a harvest. That's why a lot of people don't know why they don't see the, uh, all the petitions that they are asking God for. Whenever you pray to ask God something, God releases it. But He must see you bearing fruit. Because God is not going to reward uh, the flesh, somebody who is walking in the flesh. But somebody who's walking according to his word. You know, so this is why we really need to take it serious because you can be holding up your harvest by not walking in love. Mm -hmm. You know, and also your prayers cannot be answered if you're not walking in love. So love is the principal thing when it comes to walking with God, is the first of the fruit of the spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Next week we look at the second fruit. Uh, which is uh, peace. It's a love, joy, and, uh, joy and peace. So next week we're going to look at joy and peace and that, how the, both of them can also impact our harvest. Amen? Amen. Any questions?